Okay, thank you everyone. That's officially start. And uh, just a quick comment on Joe and uh, Brian. And th thank you, Joe, you talked about the uh, human nature. Okay, I think that's an important question. And just as important as in the Western philosophy, like uh, existence of God, okay? And the guys all night, all nice, all uh, bene benevolence. And where's the evil coming from? Same, same per annual question that like in the Chinese philosophy, especially like Confucius, uh, Confucianism. Since human nature is good, where's the evil coming from? And then I think for last week, we talked about this. This week, we will focus on the human nature is good. Start from Mencius and then continue from the Chen brother. Okay, uh, so I think that's very important, as important as uh, existence of God. Okay, so uh, that's number one. And Brian talked about the originality. I think the Jude Judaism Christian tradition, we have the so-called uh, ex, ex nihilo, right? So we create something. So the originality always an important question. But in Chinese, if you look at the cosmology, how does this world start seems not that important. And then just like Brian, you mentioned, Chinese philosophy or entire Eastern philosophy try to combine everything instead of uh, separating, okay? So the combination is become important uh, 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 effort when people put everything together. So I think that would be the key difference. And I, I'm not saying which one is good, which one is bad, but basics, that's the difference. And you probably will uh, tell the difference if you go in further. So um, let's share my screen and then let's officially uh, start. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so right now, uh, so right now we go, uh, first thing that we, I will take two weeks off, that means next week and the week after for the American Thanksgiving. And then on December 3rd, we will have a, a schedule talking about free will. Uh, SK is coming back to, to uh, continue the uh, Hinduism. And then uh, December 10th, I will make the last section for this year. And then this one will conclude the entire Song, Northern Song dynasty, the uh, Neo-Confucius movement. And then next year, we will, I will find a new time, probably two hours earlier. Uh, yeah, probably two, probably I will shift two hours earlier on Saturday. And sometime in January, I will restart. Uh, this series. Okay, so uh, that's the plan for today. And the last week, we okay, let's move on. Uh, uh, last week, we talked about Zhang Zai, about the Qi, right? Okay, about Qi. Today, we talk about heart, heart, mind. That's my translation. And the next time, we are going to talk about the principle. And I think the proper way is we call the universal principle. There are many different kinds of translation. Some people want to call the transcendental principle. Some people want to just use the Chinese word, di. But unfortunately, this di is the same as another word, richer di. So it's no way to separate if you do the Roman, okay, uh, you write English. So, I think I will call it the universal principle. Okay. And this universal principle will become the orthodoxy for the Chinese Confucian teaching. So it's the uh, orthodox school. Okay. Uh, that would be all. So interesting thing is there are two brothers. Today we introduced Cheng Hao, and uh, uh, December, we will introduce his younger brother, Cheng Yi. Okay. These two, they, it, we should not say they are different. Well, they are different, but not that much different. They just start to focus on different uh, points for the same issue. But 300 years later, in the Southern Song, they become a, a heated debate. One called the Hot Mind School, one called the Universal Principle School. 
So that become the two different school. And then the universal principle school become the orthodoxy of the uh, uh, Chinese uh, philosophy. So that's the uh, story. And we will have a chance to uh, talk about this one uh, later. So this one is we were talking today, we will talk about Xin Xue and basics. Uh, this one we were based on the uh, the Chen. Usually, if you read the article, they would like to say oh, Chen brother, okay? Chen, Chen brother, that, that's the word. And then they usually means him, Chen Hao, and Chen Yi, his younger brother. And the Chen Hao, today we are, I'm going to introduce, he doesn't have a lot of writing. And all the writing is combined a book called Chen, uh, two Chen brothers write it. So usually we don't know who wrote what, but basic we based on uh, their idea, their teaching, we kind of separate. Okay, this one is from the Chen Hao, this one is from Chen Yi. And the Chen Yi, lived, the younger brother, lived much longer, 22 years after his older brother's death. So his teaching, the younger brother, did become more popular because he lived longer. That's a sim simple way to look at. Uh, these two schools, to me, okay, I'm primarily interested is in Western philosophy. So these two schools' difference is very similar to David Hume and uh, uh, Kant. Okay, if you call David Hume as a sentimental, uh, sentimental. Uh, sentimental moral theory, right? So in the uh, Scottish, uh, Scottish tradition, like uh, Adam Smith, David Hume, okay? And then that will be similar to Chen Hao, that's today's subject. And next time we go to his younger brother, he's kind of like Kent, the ontology, okay? The, the ontology called uh, ethic. So this come, this two become different. But at this moment, Lawrence from 11th century, they are they don't have much different. But they you can start to see the uh, subtle difference here. So today's subject, same as last week, we learned one Chinese word called qi, and today we first thing we are going to learn is learn the. A word called xin, which is heart or heart mind. And then uh, five subjects we are going to cover. Okay? Uh, first, we will get understanding what's the meaning of heart mind. How does Chinese use today as heart mind? And then the, I probably will spend a lot of time talking about Mencius concept of heart mind because uh, it's important because uh, in today, we think Mencius is important Confucian uh, scholar or uh, the second to Confucius. But during that time, it's not because the hot topic during that time is they have the two schools, one called the respect for uh, respecting uh, Mencius, and another one is the skeptical on Mencius. Okay, so they have the two different schools. And I believe uh, Chen Hao is the person who really put Mencius in the Orthodox school, like today. So we will spend a lot of time uh, reading Mencius today. And then we're going to talk about Chen Hao as a person. Then we talk about his moral theory. And then we're going to go through for uh, the whole future development. What's his influence on the uh, philosophy. So uh, let's start from here, okay? I think everyone would uh, have, uh, probably know uh, Chinese writing is different and uh, we call the, how do you call it? Uh, hieroglyph, hieroglyphy, right? So uh, that's the way to do it and or pic, uh, pictograph. Right, so you draw a picture similar. So the word I call it uh, heart mind actually is this word, right? It's xin, okay. And the original writing is like your heart. So this word basics, okay, because in original Chinese, it's the since any symbol represent a a thing. So 
this one is your heart, something pump, pumping in your chest. So that's the shape they draw it and gradually become this word, if you can see here, right? That's the scene we write it today, okay? So that's the word that we are going to talk about. We are going to focus today. So we can look at in this way, okay? Etymology, right? Because the Chinese word, a single character, you will combine different so-called uh, uh, itamang, or you want to call it the radical, the word root combined together. So they combine together either to use the sounds or similarity of the pronunciation. Or a lot of time we call it the radical because they have the meaning on that. So the word xin, they have the two way to write. One is like this part, right? You write this way. Another way you write this one because if you put it on the side, it, this kind of thing is not easy to put. So they switch, turn one, uh, turn 90 degree. So put in this way. So there's a two way to write this word, xin. So uh, I just make a search in the internet. I just realized uh, the word Chinese character combined with this one have over a hundred on that. Okay, a lot of words we don't use, but the daily use have at least 20. I just picked 10. Okay, on that and all and for the people, I believe a few people know Chinese well here, and I think you will agree. All these words are very common words; it's not a difficult word. And for probably, if you are second grader, you should be able to know these words very well. So, first word is let us see, think tolerance. Right, this word is interesting. They put a knife on top of your heart. Okay, that means tolerance, all right? And hurry, will, idle, right? And then this one is feel, feeling, fast, comprehension, right? And please, okay? So that's mm -hmm. kind of word, uh, the, this word, xin has been used to generate a uh, new word. Uh, Jini, you have common. I know you know Chinese, so. No, I, I don't know Chinese, but I <laughs> what I what I know I'm noticing is that on on the first column and second column, the bottom part of each word is exactly same, and then on the second column here, the um, this part is all the same on the five words. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Because the both. Yeah, so. So that's yeah. interesting. I, I I thought that was interesting. Yeah, because they all, when I put it in red, they all represent xin, which is this word, right? Which is this word, right? We talk about this one. So heart, that means heart. all these uh -huh. words are related to xin, okay? So if you kind of summarize, you will know the heart, Chinese heart, meaning some psychology, related to your thinking, related to your feeling, related to your willing, your desire, and uh, your mental state. So for this reason, I think the proper translation is heart might. Uh, I think in, in some place I write might heart, and I discuss with uh, Amar, who, who is a scholar, uh, that's why he told me I should use heart mind. First is uh, consensus. Most of scholars use heart mind. Okay. Well, I should not say consensus. A lot of people use different way, but uh, heart mind probably a reasonable one. And he suggests to do heart first because uh, that's original meaning. So from now I'm going to call heart mind. Okay. Uh, so in English meaning heart sometimes we, uh, 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 talking about your feeling, right? And mind means your mental state. So I think that makes sense to make this translation. And if you have a better idea to translate, please let me know. I'm really just like Tian as a heaven. Uh, there's many different way to translate. So I'm going to do the same way to understand uh, the meaning of heart mind. So I'm going to use uh, Wittgenstein's way to uh, 
uh, using the family resemblance to try to help everyone understand uh, the, this world. Okay, in, so all this world, I just have to say is today, today's use. So that means all Chinese, the Chinese reader, you see this word, Xin, what you are thinking about this. So that's the way I try to uh, let everyone know. That's why I, this, all the term has been used, this word, heart mind. Okay. So you will see first psychology and the writing is the principle of heart mind. So that means psychology. Xiao Xin, that means small heart. Small heart mind, that means you are careful. Okay. If you are not careful, careless is coarse heart mind. Okay. If you have the gray heart mind, you means you are discouraged. Hui Xin, okay. If you talk about middle of heart mind or middle heart mind, that means it's center. Okay. So something in the center, that's a middle heart mind. And this one is interesting. If your heart mind is sour, that means you feel sad. So good heart mind, of course, I think you can guess. That means you're kind, right? And flowery heart mind, that means you are playboy or you uh, fickle. Okay? If you have opening heart mind, that means you are happy. Okay, somebody, I think it's all the people growing, growing in Chinese family or the parents like use this word. Spatial heart mind or focus your heart mind. That means be concentration. So whenever the kids are playing their phone, when they are studying, the teacher or the uh, parents will say, Zuan Xin, okay, as in to special heart mind, focus your heart mind. Okay. A basic is focus your mind. And then uh, this one is heart mind calculation. That means mental mass, mental arithmetic. Uh, if you talk about private heart mind, you talk about you are selfish. If you talk about you have a dead heart mind, that means you give up. So if you carry in your heart mind, that means you are worried, okay? You carry your heart heart. If your heart mind is slammed, right? That means you are biased, you are partial. So usually we will use this one to your parents because my parents always like my younger brother better. So she, my mother, so she is, has a slant heart mind. So I hope this one will uh, help you understand the meaning of heart mind. Okay. So before we go to mentions, because mentions use this word a lot. So put this way, this word in today's meaning I think the ancient philosophy, philosopher, they call they, their definition and how they philosophizing their moral theory will impact today's understanding of this world. So right now I'm showing you is today's understanding, today's understanding of this world. And then we can look back, how does the ancient, uh, philosopher like mentions using this word. And then uh, I think you will find out it's make more sense. Okay. They are how they use this word. So before I move to mentions, I will pause for a few minutes if you have a question or comment or anything to uh, add up. Okay. So everybody fine? Okay. So we were going to move to mentions. Talk about mentions. So uh, first, uh, I assume people know mentions, but uh, I think I need to make some introduction. Okay. So today, when we want to know who is mentions, I think it's everybody, well, not everyone. Uh, you can go to Wikipedia and you will find mentions. So I make a copy from the uh, Wikipedia. So mentions was born Meng He, that's his name. And the Chinese call him Meng Zi, 
and he was between 372 and 289. And they said he was a Chinese Confucian philosopher who has often been described as the second sage. That is, if the only Confucius himself. He's part of Confucius' fourth generation of disciples. Basically, he's talking about he is the student of Zizi's student. So Zizi is Confucius' grandson. So he's the fourth generation uh, of uh, disciple. And the Mencius inherited Confucius' ideology and developed it further, living during the Warring State period, Confucius in the earlier time, about 200 years earlier in the so-called uh, spring and autumn. And he is said to have spent much of his life traveling around the state, offering counsel to different rulers. Conversation with these rulers from the basis of the measures, which were later be canonized as Confucius uh, uh, classic. So when they say later be, be canonized, that means in Zhu Xi's time, which is 12th, uh, 13th century. Okay, not during this time. So one primary principle of his work is that human nature is good, or you want to call it the righteous and the human. And the, the response of the citizen of the palace, the ruler embodied this principle and the state with okay, righteous and human policy were furnished by nature. So basics, that's his teaching. Okay, that's in, Wikipedia, and there's nothing wrong in Wikipedia, but I would like to change our view a little bit. Okay, let's look at how Sima Qian, I think we talked about this one uh, uh, three months ago in the Han Dynasty, about 191 BC. Uh, if you, the, the book called the uh, uh, Records of the Great Historian, by Sima Qian, he's in the Han Dynasty, which is 300 years after Mencius' time. Okay, remember this time. So he's much closer okay, uh, to Mencius than today. Today we have 2,500 years. Okay, that's our view. Let's see how his view. And the reason I picked this book, uh, Record of Grand Historian, because uh, I introduced this one uh, a few months ago. This one is kind of like ancient, uh, ancient with uh, psych, uh, Wikipedia. Uh, so they, he lists a lot of account, especially biography. And Sima Chen lists the 70 biographies. Okay. So remember 70. Okay. And then, and they have about 130 uh, uh, for the emperor. Okay. So that's he, he, he organized everything in this way. So 70 biographies, Confucius has one, okay? Oh no, Confucius is not in there. Confucius is in another set, it has a whole chapter, whole book about Confucius. So Mencius, uh, uh, Sima Qian only lists him in one biography, which he calls the biographies of Mencius and the Xunzi and the others. So basics in Sima Qian, Sima Qian is a Confucian, okay? So he put the Confucius, very important, put him, the, the, write a lot of things about him. But to Mencius, he has Mencius share with Xunzi, who is a archer driver to Mencius, right? Uh, Xunzi talk about human nature is bad. Many Xunzi talk about human nature is good. So at the beginning, Sima Qian talk about many At the end, Sima Qian talk about Xunzi. And in the between, he talk a few other people. So you can see how important of many Xunzi. It's not that important at all, right? He only put everything together and he just happened on the first one. And these four lines of Chinese, I copy from the text. So that's the only thing Sima Qian write about him. Okay, only this line. And I make the translation myself. It's only this law. So you can see in that point of view, you know, uh, the, 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 the importance of mentions is only worth probably 
four lines of writing. Okay. So it's not, he so in in this point of view, he is a good important person, but it's not different, it's not second uh, sage. Okay, still far away from the second sage. So um how Sima Chen write it? Let's read it. Mentions was from the state of Zhou. Okay, Zhou is a tiny state. Okay, in today's Shandong, which is not far away from uh, Confucius' hometown, he studied with the disciple of Zisi, which is Confucius' grandson. That's why we call him as the fourth generation. After completing his study, he traveled to the state of Qi, but the King Xuan of Qi didn't employ him. Then he traveled to the state of Liang, okay, which is Wei. Okay. And uh, the King Hui of Liang didn't like his ideas because his ideas are pedantic and impractical. At the time, the state of Qin, Qin is the, uh, the state eventually conquered all the uh, other states in China, okay? Employed in Sangyang, uh, Sangyang is a famous legalist and reformer, and the state of Qin become rich and powerful. The state of Chu, which is on the south and the way, employed Wu Qi, which is the school of military, and the, the state become strong and defeat other states. The Qin Wei of Qi and the Qin Xuan of Qi employed the disciple of Sun Zi. Uh, somebody said he's the writer of the, uh, um, uh, the art of military, uh, the art of war, but which is, may not be true. But anyway, he is the school of military and the Tian Ji, who is the great general, and many feudal laws submit to the state of Qi. People were interested in diplomatic and military strategy. On the other hand, Mencius like to talk about the ideas of ancient sage kings, which were not popular. He retired and transmitted Confucius teaching and also the seven book of Mengzi, which is Mencius we have today with his disciple Wan Zhang and others. Uh, another famous disciple is um, Gong Sun Chou, and we will read him. So basics, that's about him. And that's all he, uh, 300 years later, uh, the great uh, historian, uh, he write about uh, Mencius. So the reason we bring this one is, uh, I bring this uh, one is, I show this one in, uh, about one month ago, when we talk about Tang Dynasty, which is about the eighth century, uh, because the Buddhism become popular, okay. so people just like uh, I think it's a joke uh, made a comment, right? That's the question. Buddhism bring in right. What's the nature of you? Who am I? Okay, the self issue. Consciousness, my self issue, and the destination. What's the purpose I'm living? Right. So this question, Confucius or other Chinese philosophers, they don't have answer. So when Han Yu want to reject uh, 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 a foreign religion like Buddhism, this question is still there. You need to answer the question. Then Chinese call Xing Ming Zi Xue. Okay. So that means. Xing means your human nature, or who am I? Okay, you have to understand yourself. Ming means your destiny, what's your purpose okay, of living? So this question we have to answer without in, I will say in Christian world is simple, right? Your purpose is go to heaven, okay? So uh, that's easy, and you are a sinner, okay? Wow. You are Adam and Eve, and uh, you, you are sinner. So you just repent and okay, that's an easy okay. another way. But Chinese doesn't have this kind of uh, answer, okay? And nobody answered this question. So that's the question you need to deal with. So Han Yu make his effort on this one. I think I showed this one, I just repack another way. So kind of like he, that's Feng Yolan's writing. He's talking about Han Yu also borrow, okay? 
uh, Zen Buddhism tradition, right? Zen Buddhism I'm talking about like from the Bodhidharma, the first the patriarch and uh, the generation and the generation to Hongren, the fifth uh, uh, patriarchs and then transfer to the, the sixth. So talking about they have the one line of transmission. So Han Yu is talking about uh, which he also borrowed from mentions. So, so mentions start to bring to the table here. So he talking about like, uh, at, at least the year, almost every 500 years, you have the sage. So at the beginning, that's the emperor Yao, Sun, and Yu, that's the three ancient sage. Then you transfer to the Tang, which is the Song dynasty. Then another around 500 years, that's the Duke Zhou, Okay, there are three sage, uh, Qin Wen and the Qin Wu and the Duke Zhou and Confucius keep talking about that's the perfect system. And the 500 years later, they have the Confucius. Okay, they all sage, okay, they all sages. Every 500 years, they have sages. Then Han Yu is talking about Mencius is continuing on this one. So right now, in that's moved back to the Song dynasty, which is uh, 11th century. Who will continue this tradition, right? If you recall, last week we talked about Zhang Zai's four sentence. He's talking about continue from the lost ancient teach. That means here, after mentions, how are we going to continue? That's their job. You cannot let the Buddhism or religious Taoism to, 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 to lead us. We have to continue. Uh, from the ancient sage king, Duke Zhou, Confucius, Mencius, then we need to do it. Okay, I think that's what they are talking about. They feel like that's important. Okay, so that's the uh, the way they are doing now. That's in the, in the so I'm going to move on to a few uh, reading on Mencius. Okay, so before that, uh, you know, I will pause for. Uh, question or comment or something you want to add on, agree, disagree, or something. No question, no comment. Okay, so let's, I'm going to read a few uh, 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 chapters. Your mentions is, uh, I think some of uh, you are in the Confucius Analog reading. And then I'm going to start to read some of mentions. So you will see a few different on that. I think today I will bring uh, a few mentions reading on here. So uh, the reason I bring this mentions reading is this one is the foundation of Chen Hao's uh, philosophy. Okay. So, uh, so if you read the Feng Yolan's uh, the book, only three pages, and I don't know how many of you read it and how much you think it makes sense. I think it could be difficult if you don't know the mentions teaching. So that's why I think only three, four pages, we need to know a lot of background of uh, mentions. <clears throat> so this fame, I think that's the first book. It talk about, oh no, not first book. Um, I talk about the uh, so-called Jin Xin, that's the exhausting one's heart mind. Okay. So Mencius said, he who has exhausted all his heart mind knows his nature. So he start to talk about heart mind and the nature. Knowing his nature, he knows heaven. So there's three things that he mentioned quickly, right? Heart mind, human nature, and uh, heaven. Okay. Knowing his nature, he knows heaven. To preserve his heart mind and nourish one's nature is the way to serve heaven. No matter one live long or short, he must wait in the cultivation of his personal character of whatever issue. This is the way of establishing his heaven ordained being. Okay, so if I make it I think the, uh, the, uh, the the Chinese, especially the ancient Chinese, the logic is not that clear, but if you make the table here. So basically, mention talking about you need to do three things, right? Preserve one's heart mind, then nourish one's nature, 
the innate nature, then you can serve in the heaven. Okay, so, so that's the three things. So you can see the, the, the religious question has been set here. That's your self issue. You have a heart mind and the purpose serving heaven okay, is here. I think this sentence has been there for a long time, but depending on how you read it, I believe in the Han Dynasty, people will focus on heaven. So you will become more uh, uh, mystical or uh, style. You, that was heaven human interaction. But during this time, uh, Chen Hao is going to focus on the heart mind, okay, preserve or keep your heart mind. So that will be the uh, uh, focus in uh, Song, Northern Song Dynasty. Another famous thing I uh, mentioned is talking about is so-called all things are already complete in us. So Mencius said, all things are already completed, uh, complete in us. There is no greater delight than to be conscious of sincerity and self-examination. If one act with a vigorous effort at the law of reciprocity, when he seeks for realization of Ren, nothing can be closer than his uh, approximation to it. So here he is talking about everything is ready for me. Okay, in this world, okay, human, okay, we already have everything. So only thing you need to do is cheng, okay, sincere, okay, and uh, fun and the self examination. Then you will reach. Uh, the delight, and sometimes I like to translate it, the happiness. That's so basically he's talking about from your heart, you can pursue happiness in mentions. Okay, this one. So then I'm going to move to about most important thing because he talk about the self. Okay, so mentions is going to focus on uh, human nature, good or bad. So here, Mencius has, we all, most of people probably know Mencius is the one uh, uh, arch driver who is Xun Zi, talking about human nature is bad. But Mencius doesn't have a chance to argue with him because he's much, about 50 to 100 years after Mencius death. So Mencius doesn't know him. So Xun Zi criticized Mencius, that's true. But Mencius and Gao Zi, or we call it Mr. Gao, all right, it's important. I think it's probably one quarter of mentions the book is about, <laughs> they mention about Gao's, Mr. Gao. So we don't have Mr. Gao's writing left. So we don't know what's his philosophy, but he probably one of the popular one or famous one during Mencius time. And otherwise Mencius would not put a lot of effort to criticize him. All right, so Mencius put a lot of effort uh, effort to crit criticize him. So we will see what Mencius view on that. So Mencius is the seven book, even have a one book called uh, Book of Gods. So basically the whole, he used whole book to uh, refute uh, Gods' philosophy. So the main point is this. <clears throat> Mr. Gao said, human nature is like water uh, whirling around in the corner open a passage for it to the east and it will flow to the east. Open passage for it to the west, it will flow to the west. Human nature is indifferent to good and evil, just as water is indifferent to east and west. So his Mr. Gao's philosophy basically is talking about human is neither good nor bad, it's neutral, okay? Uh, but Mencius uh, reply on this. Mencius said, water indeed will flow indifferently to the east or west, but will flow indifferent up and down. Okay, so of course going down. The tendency of human nature to good is like the tendency of water to flow downward. There are none but have this tendency to good, just as all water flow downward. 
Now, by striking water and causing it to dip up, you may make it go over your forehead. And by damming and leading it, you may force it up a hill. But are such movements according to the nature of water? Of course, the answer is no. It is the force applied which causes them. When men are met to do what is not good, their nature is dealt with in this way. So Mencius teaching is human nature is good, just like water going down. When you see the bad people, that's outside the force make it bad. So if you leave the people alone, they will do good thing. And you see the people, bad people, the thieves, the robber, they are forced to do so. Okay. So you may think about um, why Mencius say this. It sounds stupid. You know, he's a bad guy, the serial killer. Uh, they are good. Okay. They are somebody forced these people to kill other people. Okay, uh, I think Mencius point is here. He is not talking to the regular people. He's talking to the prince. The, uh, the, the, so he is telling the prince, human nature are good. Because during that time, some uh, based on the Sima Qian's writing, right? Legalism become popular. So, he mentions is telling the ruler, human nature, the people, okay, are good. So why you have to see thieves? Some people violate the law because they are forced to do so. If people are poor, they steal to steal. They start to rob, right? If they have an earthquake, they have a, a natural disaster, people cannot survive. They will do bad things. So, what is a ruler to do is let people do the good thing. Okay, so I think that's the mentions purpose when he call human nature is good. That's uh, that's why he has this kind of argument. So uh, on the other chapter, that's also uh, probably more famous. I think we read uh, uh, most of part last week because we are talking about the qi, because Mencius mentioned about qi in this chapter. What I skipped last week is the beginning at the end. So that's why you probably only see the qi part. But if you, today I try to put everything together, uh, bring up the whole conversation, you probably will see how qi and the heart, okay, uh, or so-called the heart mind connect together. So again, also related to Mr. Gao, right? Mencius said, he, he even quote, okay, Mr. Gao. Mr. Gao said, what is not attained in words is not to be sought in the heart mind. What produces dissatisfaction in the heart mind is not to be held by qi, the data, okay, which is the produce dissatisfaction in the heart mind is not to be held by qi, maybe cor correct. He's talking about the second part, is correct, okay? But the first part, the formal, and that what is not attained in the world is not to be sought in the heart mind, cannot be correct. This word, this will is the, okay, the will is leader of qi. Qi prevailed and animate the body. The will is the chief and the, the qi is supporting it. Therefore, I say, control your will, never abuse your qi. Okay, so uh, I think the logic is a little bit uh, confused and uh, because they never learn uh, syllogism, okay. Uh, they never learn, they learn uh, Aristotle that we have to forgive them. Because, so I just kind of organize in this way. Their argument between Mr. Gao and Mencius is here. They talk about the world, okay? I think that's, that means the teaching, the virtual teaching. In Mr. Gao's point of view is the virtual, okay? Will teach your heart and your heart will affect your qi, okay? Okay, so it's uh, the virtual, the world, and the heart mind, and the chi, that's the sequence. Mencius say, no, 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 it's wrong. I agree, Mencius agree from chi 
if I'm hot mind will control your chi. But the virtue or the words is not going to impact your heart, your heart, uh, heart mind. The chi is going to control it. So if you look at the sequence, it would be in Gao Zi's point of view, would be virtual teaching, heart mind, and the chi. And the main point is heart mind first, then heart mind will lead the chi, and the chi will lead the virtue. So why that's important? I think if you bring to the Western point of view is this. Is virtual external or internal, right? In Gao's, in Mr. Gao's point of view, virtual is external, it's outside you. Mencius point is virtual is within you, okay? So I think you can bring to the uh, human nature in this way, because since your human nature is good, so the virtue is generated from your heart. And the Gao's, Mr. Gao's point of view is human nature is neither good nor bad. So you teach me the good thing, I have a good heart, then I generate a good qi, okay? I do a good deed. So I think that's the philosophy they are doing. Even they don't think, I don't know, they really think this way or not, but the Song scholar, okay, they try to view in this way. So that's the argument. And then we read this one, they talk about important teaching. Is, so they start have, talking about Gong Sun Chou is he a mentioned student. So ask uh, mentions again, right? Uh, the whale is the chief and the chi, the, uh, the chief and the chi is subordinate to it. Why do you say control your world never abuse your chi? So he talked about, oh, when people run or uh, foreign because people think it's it's hard. No, actually it's a cheat. So we talk about you need to control your chi. Then I think so we talked about this one last week. And then uh, because Mencio is criticized Mr. Gao, apparently Mr. Gao, Mr. Gao could be very famous philosopher or during that time. So he's a student, uh, Gong Sun Chou, start to ask uh, my master, uh, uh, where in you uh, surpass others? Basically talk about why, <laughs> uh, why, why, why you are so good, right? So I uh, mentioned to talk about two things. I understand what I'm good in nourishing my all inspiring chi. Okay, we are not going to talk this part, but understand what also important because you can imagine if you put heart mind as a center, every word that you said, right? I can understand how you think about it. That's why Mencius said he understand people's mind, heart mind, uh, the heart, uh, because from the world, okay, you know, he know, he cannot be also, if you assume the world is coming from your heart mind, so Mencius will say, okay, I know words, I know people's word because I can read your mind. And another thing, Mencius talk about good in nurturing, uh, nourishing my awe-inspiring chi. So Gong, that's the first time in the history, this word, awe-inspiring chi coming out. So uh, Gong Sun Chou, of course, will ask, what do you mean, awe-inspiring chi? And I think we read this one uh, last week, but okay. But since it's important, many should say it is difficult to explain. The chi is exceedingly great and strong being nourished by straightforwardness without being hurt. It can grow to uh, fill up the heaven and the earth. It also needs righteousness, yi and dao, okay, to grow. Otherwise it's stuff, it's organic. It can grow as big as to fill up to the heaven and the earth. It is produced by the accumulation of intended righteous deed. It is not to be obtained by incidental righteous act. If one's conduct doesn't match his my heart, qi is starving. Okay, so he's talking about you need to fit the qi with the right uh, attitude and it will grow. If you don't do it, you will shrink. Let's put it this way. So that's he talk about qi. Then he continue. That's the important part here. So then he just continue after talking about qi, right? Uh, remember the, the uh, heart mind and the chi, then you talk about virtue. Then he, he talked about the, how to nourish your chi. So he's going to tell very 
uh, I would say controversial idea here. And then you will see the uh, subtle difference with the two different schools will start from here. So Mencius continues to say, therefore I said, okay, Mr. Gao has never understood righteousness, okay? Because he make it something external, righteousness. He made, Mr. Gao make uh, uh, righteousness external. One must do something, never make a correction, never forget the heart mind, never help to grow. So this, this word okay, is very uh, controversial. Mention they talk about what, what do you mean, right? You, you must do something. I can understand. We need to do something. But what do you never make correction? So here is Chinese say, Wu Zheng, Xin Wu Wang, Wu Zhu Zhang. Okay, he's mentioned he's talking about never make a correction. Okay, I think the meaning is never make a correction for others. You do it for yourself. Okay, never forget. Forget what? Never help to grow. Okay, so that's a very strange teaching. Okay, so so Mencius know that. That's why he make an example. Let us not be like the men of Song. Okay, for some reason they all like make fun of people from the state of Song. So he said, let us not like Song. So whenever some stupid people, they will use the people from the Song. So there was a man of song who worried that his sprout, his farmer, right, were not growing. And so he pulled it up. He just pulled up. Having done this, he returned home confusedly and said to his poor people, I'm tired today. I have been helping the sprout to grow. His son ran to look at them and found them all withered. So that's the famous uh, story of uh, what we call uh, 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 a fable. Okay, so you see, you can usually, when I was a child, when we learned this one, basics, the teacher is you should be patient. Okay, if you pull up the uh, plant or sprout, you will die. So you should be patient. That's what we learn in school. But in this text, he's not talking about this. He's, he's talking about, and his, this one, that's why explain never helps to grow. That's mentions he's talking about. You don't pull it up, okay? The, the sprout will grow itself. That's also related to his, his view. Human nature is good. You don't need to help, okay? So this word, never helps to grow. Uh, I will suggest if you are Confucius, right, uh, Confucian, you will focus on grow, okay? You, you will naturally grow. But if you are Taoism philosopher, you will focus on never help. Leave me alone, okay? Leave people alone. They know how to do it. So since we are reading this one as Confucius, Confucian teaching, so we focus on grow. So when we read help as outside force, okay? You no need outside force. It will grow just like a sprout. That's why Mencius continue to talk about there are few in the world who do not assist the sprout to grow. They assist them to grow long, pull out their sprout. What, do, uh, what they do is not only no benefit to the nature, but uh, to injure it. Okay, so that that's the Mencius talking about. Uh, the human nature is good, you will naturally grow. And this concept, uh, if you watch Chinese Kung Fu movie, okay, I don't know how, much, how many know Kung Fu, okay, uh, Chinese Kung Fu, okay. Uh, there's a two kinds of Kung Fu, right? Uh, if you watch the uh, Jackie Chan, okay, or Jet Li, okay, the Kung Fu movie, this kind of like uh, Taekwondo or like Shaolin Temple, this kind of movie, and we call it the external force, right? So you hit hard and you can break the uh, 10, 10, 10 brick at one time. That's the external force. That's one kind of Kung Fu, right? They have another kind of Kung Fu that's so-called internal force, just like the Tai Chi, right? You are slow 
and then uh, look soft, but you still can do it for a 10 years old boy, you can throw out a 200 pound man. Okay, so this kind of soft force. So if you look at the Kung Fu in this way, that's kind of like Mencius is talking about human nature. It's inner force, you already have it. You just grow it, okay? You don't need outside world. That's another way to, to think away. So, but he's not talking about Kung Fu, he's talking about the uh, virtual human nature is good or bad. So uh, to this point, I will uh, stop for a minute. If you have a question, comment, then I hope I make it clear. You know, it's not very, I, I would say that's not easy, but uh, I just want to say, if you have any question, comment, or uh, or anything you want to share. No, no one have a question? Uh, Oka? Oka. Yeah, please. Ah, uh, yes. Hi, I just um wondering, maybe um, is is it possible that a uh, hard mind in something like could be translated like a soul? Yes, some people translate as a soul. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> It's a soul because the Chinese don't say soul. Okay, so you can say hard mind is soul. But again, I I reject this translation because when you talk about soul, you might think about after death, right? <laughs> Does the soul exist after death? Then you create another question: immortality of soul, and the uh, does the soul exist before you uh, you were born so a lot of questions here <laughs> so uh, that's why you know and i do see some uh, scholar use the word so thank you <laughs> okay um i uh, is there uh, some kind of a separate concept that closer to soul well chinese have the, some words called soul okay by close to the ghost and some people will say that's the qi, we have the yin and the yang, and then for the yin, yin qi collect together, that's kind of ghost, but it's not really a soul. But but Chinese also believe after death, you have, you go somewhere, and which part? Must be soul, right? Nothing else. So that's, <laughs> that's another question, yeah. But uh, it's it's like if it's um, ghost, so it's probably closer to spirit, not to soul. Uh, yeah, and some people, I think a lot of uh, 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 writing, they will just use the word "shin" okay to avoid confusion. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but exile that's. That, that caused another problem. So it never be good. So, and, but thank you for your suggestion and uh, your observation. That's very uh, uh, meaningful. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, thanks. Quan, <laughs> please. Uh, yes, uh, it's about precisely the question about the soul. Uh, what do you think about the concept of the sun hon chi pa? Huh? Excuse me, I don't get it. Yeah, the San Hon Chi Po. Okay. Oh, oh, oh San Hon so. Chi Po. Three, seven, okay, three Hun and the Po. I think they have the definition between Hun and the Po, right? Yeah. So, so that's, I think that will close to your spirit, right? So, yes. yeah, when, 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 when I was, uh, well, that me, and then I know in the countryside, when the kids are crying all the time, so you will have the shaman come and say, oh, they, some of your the kids' soul has been scaled away. So you should have the 10, right? Three plus seven. Some of them are gone. So you have to do something to call it back. Then you know. So yeah. that, that's another interest part. Yeah. Yeah. But my idea is that the chi paw is related to the body. And in that sense, when the body uh, decomposes, uh, that part of the, the soul in quotation mark is destroyed okay but 
the hon oh, okay. is, is considered as the spiritual soul, meaning the heavenly soul that is not uh, related or not uh, dependent on the intact body. Uh, I would say that if we try to find a Chinese concept that is the closest to the soul, according to Western understanding, I would suggest the hon as the concept, the Chinese concept, the closest to the Western, in quotation mark, yeah. soul. Yeah, I agree. Hun probably is the right word. Okay. But today we are not talking about the soul, but oh, you are not there when, um, when Pin is talking about the Liao Zai. <laughs> that's a good subject to bring up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I should have been there. Yeah, you should. You, you, you should you, you, that, that's a good subject. But at that time, nobody asked this. Okay. Yeah, too bad. Uh, okay, another subject we need to talk about, and that's very important. Okay, so I think a lot of people talk about four seats. That's a fun mentions. Okay, so right now you will, I hope uh, uh, you get to this point because uh, Mencius is talking about qi, talking about your heart, mind heart, a heart mind, which is good. Okay, how does it relate to his four seeds teaching, right? So he that's and uh, he talk about no outside help. Okay, how all this one are connected here. He talked about four seeds, that's important part, and uh, especially in the Western world. I think this four seed probably more famous in Western than in uh, Asia, okay? So Mencius said, all men have a heart mind which cannot bear to see the suffering of others. So I think that, that's his fun, fundamental argument, right? Because you, okay, you just cannot bear to see people suffering. Nobody, doesn't matter how savage you are, you are not torturing baby for fun. And you see the baby suffering or crying, you are to tend the baby. That's the nature, that's his evidence. The sage king had this heart mind to come of compassion. That's the compassion he's talking about. As a matter of course, he likewise a, a, a compassionate government. When with a heart mind of compassion was practiced a compassionate government, to rule the kingdom was as easy as a matter to make everything go wrong in the pub. He said, it's easy, right, for the uh, sage king because he has the compassion, that's his nature, the sage king, and he will form a compassionate government. And basic, everything is done, that's good government. When I say that all men have a heart mind which cannot build to see the suffering of others, my meaning may be illustrated in this. Even nowadays, if a man suddenly see a child fall, uh, about to fall into a well, he will, without exception, experience a hard mind, here you talk about feeling, of alarm and the sympathy. They will feel so, the kind of hard mind. Okay, wh what's the reason? Not as a ground on which they may gain the favor of a child's parents, nor as a ground on which they may seek the praise of their neighbors and the friends, nor from a dislike uh, to the bad reputation. So Mencius, I think his argument is quite strong. He talked about when you see a child about to fall to the well, right? He will jump to help. He was not thinking about, oh, I'm doing this. His parents will thank me. He's not thinking about doing this. My friend will respect me. He's not thinking, even thinking, if I don't do this, people will uh, say I'm the bad guy. No, he didn't say, just nature. He will do this. So that's Mencius argument, say, everybody has a good heart. Uh, Joe, please. We covered something like this with Confucius, didn't we? No. The same. Oh, okay, it no, was the same no, that's thing. Very, thought... that, that's why I would like to, I, at the beginning, I would say, today our view of uh, Mencius is very, and then if you look at it, you probably will see a lot of difference between Confucius and the Mencius. Yeah, it's not definitely not in Confucius. Yeah, but uh, uh, okay. So okay. when I read this one, actually, I just recently read the uh, French philosophy, uh, La Maitre, 
Uh, I don't know, you know this one or not. Uh, a man, a machine, okay. So he argued uh, man is not much different, just upgrade animal, both, you know, uh, just a machine, you know, uh, your soul, just material soul, okay. Uh, that's the Lamitri, Lamitri's argument. And the, the, to the moral question, Lamitri make, uh, he's an 18th century, early 18th century French philosophy. Okay, so uh, he talked about, oh yeah, he kind of used the same, same example. Oh, human nature, just naturally, you will have this kind of feeling. And he also bring up animal have this kind of feeling, which may not be true, but could be true. The animal have there. So as an animal, you all have this kind of feature. That's the matrix argument, which is uh, similar, I would say, a little bit similar here. Okay, so, so here is the core of his argument, mentions argument, right? From this case, we may perceive the heart mind of sympathy, that's the first seed, is essential to man. Okay, here he used, it's not seed, he used shin, he used heart mind of sympathy. That the heart mind of shamefulness is essential to man. That the heart mind of complacence is essential to man. And that the heart mind of judgment is essential to man. The heart mind of sympathy is the seed. Okay, here seeds, he used the word called duan. Okay, duan means the end or the beginning. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking about change to different word, but since most of people understand as a seed, so I will keep the word seed, right? The heart mind of shamefulness is the seed of righteousness. The heart mind of the compliance is the seed of the, which is ritual. And the heart mind of judgment is the seed of wisdom. You need wisdom to make proper judgment. Man has these four seeds as they have their four limbs. So that mentions uh, four seed argument. When men having these four seeds, yet say of themselves, they cannot develop them. They cheat themselves, okay? So if somebody say, oh, I cannot do good, uh, uh, that's, no, you cheat yourself. He who says his prince cannot develop them, cheat his prince. So you're telling the uh, minister, right? You have to advise your uh, prince. You all can do good, just like ancient sage kid. Since all men have these four seeds in themselves, let them know to give them all development and completion and the issue will be like fire, which has begun to burn or the spring water. So basics, everything will naturally grow. And then, so I'm not going to continue, but basically later on, he developed his series about oat and the can, right? So his example is, two things, right? You are not able to and not where it to are different. If I ask you jump over that river, cross that ocean, yeah, I can't because I'm not able to do it. If I ask you to pick a stick for the old man, I say, no, I can't. No, you are not where to it. So his advice is this, human nature are good. The Prince, nature also good. You all this and then what you need to do is just do it, right? You there's no way you say no, I cannot do it. You can do it, okay? And just if you say I can, because you are not willing to. That mentions uh, argument, and that's his uh, philosophy for this way. Okay, even not written in the philosophy form, and uh, in our. Confucius energy meeting. I find out people like me to make a table. So I decide to make a table here. Okay, four seats, that'll be easy to understand. Okay, so basically four seats, right? Let me repeat, right? If you talk about your heart mind, there's the heart mind of the sympathy, shamefulness and the compliance, okay? And the judgment, okay? But in other, Chapter he called compliance, he called gongji, respectfulness. Okay, so uh, not so uh, consistent, but I think basically means the same thing. And uh, this kind of heart is the seed of run, the seed of righteousness, the seed of ritual, the seed of wisdom. Okay, so that becomes four seeds. 
grow from the full heart, you should further grow. And I just put some psychology words here because that's a Chinese word uh, he used. Uh, sympathy, basics is talking about the hidden sorrow and the judgment. He talk about the feel right or wrong. You can feel what's right or wrong. That, that's what he's talking about. So we're done with mentions. Okay, then we have some time. We can move on to today's main subject, which is Chen Hao. Okay. So question, comment? Okay, so let's move on for Chen Hao. Okay, it's simple, Chen Hao. Uh, I think we talk about a few people. Okay, we talk about Sao Yong. We talk about uh, Zhou Dunyi. Uh, Sao Yong is the number of stubborn. Okay, I will bring him back. Okay, uh, next next time. And uh, Chen Yi, uh, uh, Zhou Dunyi talking about the five element, the Tai Ji, the ultimate uh, 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 draw chart. And Zhang Zai, we talked about last week, talk about Qi. And today we talk about Chen Hao. Chen Hao is the student of Zhou Dunyi, and he has another younger brother, Chen Yi, we are going to talk. These five people, we call the five uh, Confucian uh, scholar of five Confucian masters in the Northern Song Dynasty. They all live in relative the same area. They all related, they talk to each other. So they, are, they build the foundation of the uh, Neo-Confucianism. So he was born at Chen Hao. Today we talk about the older brother, uh, 1032, uh, Min Dao Yi of the Ren Zhong. Okay, so, uh, so that's why a lot of time they call Mr. Ming Dao. Okay, so he's one of the five Confucian master in Northern Song. And when he was 25 years old, he passed the uh, imperial examination and started his career. And when, uh, 1070, and he left the central government and become the reform movement from, uh, because the, okay, the, that person we will talk about probably next year, the movement from Wang An Shi. I think we will, I will mention, I will brief talk about this one. Wang An Shi is important, he had the reform. So turn out a lot of neo-Confucian scholars uh, disagree with Wang An Shi's reform. So they left the government job and they become a teacher, they become a professor, uh, a philosopher. So before this time, you don't see much people, uh, much Chinese philosopher, uh, they, they all government officials, okay? So they do some government job. But during this time, you will see, for, uh, there's many, many reasons, okay? We can discuss next time. But basics, they are just like teacher, professor, philosopher, they write book, they teach, okay? They are not employed by government because Wang An Shi, okay, they all disagree with him, so they retire and work. So he died at 1085, 53 years old. His brother, Chen Yi, died at 1170, 74 years old, 22 years after his death. So we can fairly say they have this kind of teaching, they probably not much different, but since his younger brother lived, 22 years after his death. So uh, his younger brother teaching become more popular or become uh, orthodox, uh, orthodox. Okay, let's put it this way. So as a person, uh, I copy from one of the historian writing. Okay, he said that he can sit all day long like a statue, but he was very warm and affable when he receiving people. So he's very nice, gentle guy, happy. Okay, and uh, uh, again, you can imagine if a person's philosophy is focused on your heart, your heart, uh, so-called heart mind, uh, how to practice. <laughs> and if it is nature is good, you have to grow, just like it mentions, grow your good nature. So meditation could be a good way to do it. So he likes to do meditation. And then instead of uh, doing this, I'm going to bring two points he's writing on this. So you probably can know uh, Chen Hao's personality. So uh, this one is famous, okay? He talk about spring days, okay? Sparse clouds and light breeze nearly noon. 
after flowers and the willows, I cross the river front. Okay, Chinese poem during this time, a lot of, most of poem, you, you, you should think as a painting a picture. Okay, so he's talking about springtime, the picture, right? Passer by watch, people pass by watch, not knowing my joyful heart mind. Okay, uh, remember in the Mencius teaching, talking about sincere, sincerity, then you will be happy. So that's what he's talking about, okay? He has a joy, he feel happy, okay? So people don't know, you know, don't know me because of my heart, right? Saying I follow a dead to enjoy free hour. Say, oh, he just follow mimic the uh, uh, the young kids, you know. So, you know, that's his uh, short writing about uh, springtime, okay. So his personality is different than his younger brother. His younger brother is a much serious person, okay. So if you want to imagine, use my metaphor, uh, uh, David Hume and Kent, right? He's kind of David Hume, sentimental, okay. And then I don't know the personality of Kant, but I assume as a deontologist, probably more serious on that. So just, and then uh, I think the, the book, the uh, short history of the Chinese philosophy at the end, Feng Yulan also include uh, this point, okay? Uh, to talk about Chen Hao, okay? And then this one, this one is also interesting because there's uh, some uh, philosophy uh, bring up here about Chen Hao, right? Uh, so he writes that's open day. Okay, so he talk about in my leisure time there is nothing not easy and uh, simple. I think it should be not easy nor simple. When I awake, okay. when I awake in the morning, my window already shines the sun. Okay, so. He's talking about in the winter, uh, autumn time, he get up late, okay? So he take easy, he doesn't get up early. In my calmly observation, all things have their own course. So this one, these four lines, he start bringing the metaphysical, his philosophy here. Four seasons, people enjoy the same joyful time. Through the Tao, they'll produce heaven and earth and all material. Okay, Tao will generate, produce heaven, earth, and all things. And in my thought, uh, the wind and the clouds are always transforming. I highlight this one is this four line. He is talking about calmly observation, the time, the uh, heaven, earth, and everything tangible thing and also talk about his thinking. Everything come, but his thinking can transform to anything you want. That's he pack everything in the uh, point. Neither rich pollute me nor poverty affect my happiness. A man like this, a hero indeed. So he's talking, and this one is to reflect two things. Uh, if you read, uh, uh, you learn mentions you will name. No, these words, okay, uh, never reach, pollute me, no po poverty affect my happiness. Basically, from mentions talking, uh, talk, talking about. And the, it also reflects uh, Zhang Zai. Last week, we read about his uh, Western inscription, okay. He talked about the end. He talked about leaving. I serve compliantly. Uh, that I should be at peace. So the matter I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm alive, I dead, everything should be the same. Okay, I do my job. Okay, so kind of this kind of situation we are talking about. Okay, so that's about him. And then uh, I will move to his moral theory. Okay, any question about him or any comment? Okay, so that's going to the moral theory. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy in this week. I find that the, well, should I say this way? Okay, uh, 
I think the part, I don't know if you have this question or not. The Chinese philosophy looks a little bit strange. Okay. Because I think because we have the Western mind, include the people in Asia today, being, should not say polluted, <laughs> or being set in the Western philosophy mind. When we talk about philosophy, we probably think about in tradition, right? We have the three branch, right? Metaphysic, ethic, epistemology. And some people will add the logic here, and, but sometimes you will put logic as part of metaphysics. Okay, that's debatable. But that's the way. If we have this one in your mind, when you read the Chinese philosophy, you will find out it's a strange. Look at like Chinese only focus on ethics. And the small part of ethics even doesn't have uh, try to teach you how to judge right and wrong. Look at like only a lot of... Uh, uh, teaching, moral teaching, okay, do this, don't do that, you know, just like a Ten Commandment. So, so I think that because the 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 way uh, Western look at philosophy is different than Chinese way to look at philosophy. So I I, I find out this one probably can help. Okay, I I start to find out this categories category uh, help you understand the Chinese philosophy. So if you re-categorize philosophy, okay, forget about Western philosophy. You look at the Chinese philosophy, it's fail to put its three branch in this way. First is ontology. Second, we call the Gong Fu. Okay, that's moral cultivation. And the number three is theory of realm. So this one I checked in ter Chinese called Jing Jie Lun. Okay, let's start from Wang Guo Wei, a modern uh, philosopher. Uh, uh, so he called Jing Jie Lun. And I try to find the proper translation because it kind of not exist in the Western philosophy. So they have many different kinds of translation. Some people will call it a theory of a state. Okay. Some people call the sphere, some people call boundary. Okay. But turn out I think the theory of REM probably makes sense. Okay, let me explain this one, my understanding. And you probably will see uh, how the Chinese thinker okay, uh, deal with uh, philosophical question. So silver rain kind of like you are talking about your final goal, okay? But without the telling you how to get there. Just like if one do talk about, it's Thomas More, right, the utopia. He talk about the island, it's beautiful, everything is fine, but he doesn't say, how can we do it now and become there, right? He didn't say this. He just give you a goal. And the Confucius, okay, uh, one thing called Dash, uh, not Dash, uh, Great Union, okay, Da Tong, okay. Uh, I think long time ago, Pin introduced this one. He talked about utopia concept, but didn't tell you how to do that. Everybody can, uh, the, the no, no thieves, no robbers, and then the old people, young people have been taken care of. Okay, so what? So if we think more, they had a lot of things like this, and then just like back to our reading for, uh, 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 Chen writing, another thing like this, or another thing is like Zhuang Zi, the first chapter. He's talking about the big bird the flying, you know, uh, so high, one flip can do 9,000 miles. He talked about this, what kind of philosophy of this? He's talking about the realm, the ideal situation, but without telling how to get there. But without telling, telling how to get there is the basic assumption is as long as you know the goal, you will do it. And you have your way to do it. You have your innate ability to do it. At least you set as a goal. And the close one I can find out that could be uh, the Zara Ruscha, right? By Nietzsche, right? He talked about Superman, Uberman, right? He didn't tell you how does that guy become Uberman. He just talked about he going from the mountain, he do this, do this, see this. He didn't say anything about how can I become a Superman? He didn't say that. So I think that that's the thing. 
uh, similar to this way. And then, uh, then you probably will see a lot of Chinese philosophy uh, deal with this. The reason I bring this one today is Chen Hao's philosophy. He deal a lot. Well, everything he talked, he's talking about theory of brain. Okay, that's his philosophy. Okay, and his younger brother deal more on the moral cultivation, more on the ontology part. So another way to look at is if you see the theory of brain is more on the Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, it's kind of sudden enlightenment. Enlightenment. You just talk about sudden enlightenment, the situation. You got enlightened, but you didn't tell you step by step. Moral cultivation is more on the gradual enlightenment. It tell you step by step, step by step. I think that's the difference in Chinese philosophy. So uh, I, I just want to share this one. So uh, I think like this, you will probably will appreciate more on, uh, when you read uh, Chinese philosophy, you know why they are talking about this. So again, I said, uh, Chen Hao doesn't have a lot of writing left. And then if you read the Feng Yuran's book, he has some summary on that. And basically he summarized from this short page. I, I find out, you know, so when I read the Feng Yuran writing, it looks like, I think everything is familiar. Then I realized that he is uh, uh, copied from this text. So, uh, so this one is called Si Ren Tian. Okay. Knowing Ren, okay. Uh, knowing Ren is the first step of learning. People of Ren are united with everything. Okay, talk about united everything. Righteousness, ritual, wisdom, and the trustworthiness are all Ren. Okay, remember this sentence. Okay, so this all virtue are Ren. Ren is the one united you and uh, outside world. That's basic principle. If we understand this principle, that's the principle I'm talking about of learn and practice it with sincerity and the respectfulness, or sometimes we translate it as uh, attentiveness, okay? Cheng and Jin, uh, okay? So that's the word. We will need to guard against error, nor to deliberate all the time. If we are neglect, negligent, okay? then we would need to guard against error. If you are, if we are not negligent, why would we need to guard? If you don't understand the principle, then we will need to deliberate all the time. If we keep this principle of learning for a period of time, then we will understand it. Why do we need to deliver? The principle of learning is no different from other things it belongs to. And the function of nature is our this depend on our disposal. Okay. I think that the end is very uh, lengthy, okay? But I think that's the structure of the Chinese world because it, actually it's just talking about uh, with, this, with this principle, you don't have to do, just remember, just like mentions talking about, you don't need outside help. You don't need to pull up, you will grow up. So, as long as you have the sincerity and the respectfulness, right? You don't have to always guard yourself to make mistake. As long as you understand knowing Ren, you don't have to keep thinking this right, this wrong, this wrong. Okay, you are naturally doing good. So it's simple. So that's why I'm talking about it's a kind of theory of Ren. He's talking about if you become like this, if you do this, then nothing goes wrong. I think that's uh, his teaching on this. So we have few two hands up, uh, Madeline and uh, Joe. Madeline, please. Uh, thank you, Jason. Well, I noticed in the text there was uh, some discussion of Ren in terms of uh, using it for the word paralysis. Uh, is it, is it mean, well, what, as what a, word? I didn't get it. Um, paralysis, uh, in other words, in, in medicine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I will talk about uh, in a few slides. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah, because yeah, I yeah. thought that I'm was a very interesting use of Ren and um, 
Yeah. And medicine. Okay, thank you. Chinese medicine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the okay. Okay. Yeah. I will talk about this. Uh, Joe, please. Um. Ren is impossible just to just to be clear just to maintain all the time. Correct. That's a Confucius teaching. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just want. All right. That's just all right. That's just, so. Okay. But, that, I, I I just kind of make fun of that when if you think about my uh, list category, right? Sometimes we talk about theory of rain. That means you already get there. You are sage, you are there, right? Right. That's not possible to get it in Confucius point of view. But in a way it's easy. If you talk about moral cultivation, only whether or not you want to do it, okay? Confucius will say, okay, uh, doing this, you just do it, then you can. I think they all believe the same way, but the goal is high. So. Sometimes get confused. You say that's contradict to each other. The reason is sometimes they talking about the theory of rent, the goal. Sometimes they talk about moral cultivation. So I think that's why it's sometimes confused. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Okay, let me continue here. He's going to quote from Mencius. That's why I take time to read Mencius. So I hope it will make things clear. Therefore, Mencius said, all things are already complete in us. We read that, right? We need to be sincere in order to reach the ultimate happiness. And we are not sincere, then we treat the principle rent of rent different from other. How can we reach? Okay, so basically he talked about, I just repeat, and he record, uh, Mencius said, one must do something, never make the correction, never forget the harm, never help to grow. Okay. So he tried to explain. I think I already explained all this one. And so important thing I like to talk about here is uh, the, the, the text is a little bit lengthy in Chinese, in English, unless I want to uh, repeat this language. But if we make it sure, basically it's talking about uh, 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 your heart, okay, heart, mind, and if you can keep it, and then you, sin with your sincerity, okay, respectfulness, you can do it, and you will have happiness. Remember his point, he talked about happiness. So, that's just a quick make summary. I think that's from Feng Yulan, okay, so that's uh, all, I think, I think so that's, we all have this one. Okay, so basically, he, uh, that's a part of Feng Yulan's writing. We're talking about the uh, heaven and earth, right? He quotes from Yi Jing, Book of uh, Change. Okay, so the spring virtue of heaven and earth is to give birth to life. So he, if you think about the, his philosophy, he is thinking about everything organic. It's nature. So even the virtue of heaven and the earth is the chain. For your line, use the word sun, okay, that's this word. And I think we just direct it to translate, to give birth to, okay. They have many meaning, but in uh, Chen Hao's idea, basics is talking about give birth to, okay. So just like your heart, my uh, heart might will give birth to qi and qi is, and do good, okay. So that's the medicine part, okay. Uh, on the uh, Chinese and Feng Yang uh, talking about the uh, paralysis, right? The Chinese, and that's true. And if you see Chinese medicine, if you have some problem, that's the, you know, I think the paralysis. So it's happened to impression not run. Okay, so that's the blur line, right? Between the, medicine, uh, health, and the moral. Okay, so uh, uh, this one I copy from Feng Yulan's writing. Okay, so basically it's talking about Chen Hao said, the doctor described the uh, paralysis of man's arm, leg as not run. Okay, so if you are not run, there's two meaning, because one is you are not doing good thing, okay? And that also means you don't connect, okay? The feeling, you don't connect with outside world. 
And I think one example, like to in essence here, is his teaching is uh, as a minister or as a prince or, or as a regular people, you do your thing because you and everything are one. So just like environmentalist, okay, I pick, pick up the trash, I reduce my carbon uh, consumption, I save energy, I dispose, okay, I do the right thing, not because I can save money, not because I can reward the corporate, just like I will, will, will rescue the kids uh, about to fall to the, to the whale. Not only my human nature, because I follow the principle of Ren, which is the mechanism to connect between me and the outside world. We are one. So when I clean my house, I take a, I clean my body. I don't need everybody to say, hey, Jason, you are clean. Hey, Jason, your room is clean. Because I'm happy to let. Same as a prince, a ruler, right? I take care of everybody. Because we are one, we will do it, right? So I think that's the essence of uh, uh, house teaching on this one. So uh, we have a poll, please. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Hello, Jason. I, I don't do this meetup too much. I do a lot of Srikant meetups, though, and I appreciate your uh, <laughs> your contribution. So um, I won't um, try to go too deep because I'm not as deep as you all are in this. But I think I have a question that might help illuminate something, at least for me, which is I love this concept that um, we have these natural inclinations or tendencies or the four seeds and they're just there and we can all bring them out and, and that but uh the cultivation the thing i'm a little confused about it i might have just missed something in the way you talked about it but we we can cultivate ren but there was that story of the guy who tried to help something to grow and pulled the, up by the roots so yeah. i need a little okay. clarification on what cultivation means Okay, okay, I got, got you. Okay, thank you very much. And I assume this one is a confused part. Okay, so uh, uh, I, it's very confused. I believe not only the people in the Western culture confused. I think you go to the school in, I don't know, China, go to Taiwan or uh, Hong Kong or any place in the US. Probably most of people were not doing well, good job on this. So I think the key is his, this. Chen Hao is talking about, or same as Mencia talk about, it's natural growth. You don't use outside force to have your virtue grow or run to grow. That's nature, okay? So uh, that's related to when he and Mr. Gao is arguing. Is virtue outside or inside? If you assume virtue outside, then you need outside help. You need to do something. If you believe the virtue is inside, you just do it naturally. So Paul, you ask a very good question, right? How do I, you say grow, grow, right? So do I need to drink more water? Or do I put a, 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 a fertilizer? I don't know, okay. Chen Hao Nidin, he did. Yeah, he sit there, he meditation, okay. So does that mean he's a good guy? So. Question is here, here, that's the difficult part of reading Chinese philosophy, because I put the, that's why I put this one, Suriga, he is talking about the theory of REM. Okay. He talked about the situation there, okay? He avoid, you can say avoid, or say, oh, you know what's right, what's wrong. Let me ask you, treat your parents good or bad? You know it's good, okay? Okay, uh, beat up your, Parents is right or wrong? You say no, you, you, you don't need education, okay? That's their point. But your question is very valid. Everybody asks the same question. How do I know it's wrong? It's an abuse parents, right? Should I run away or still practice Xiao, respect for me? That's a big question, right? So they, you can say they avoid this question, okay? And you can say they let you decide this, <laughs> how to do it, okay? So that's, question he didn't answer. But next time his younger brother is going to answer this question better, okay? But I just say better, may, you may not be satisfied. 
that's what I'm going to talk. So that's why we call it the Universal Principle School, because he is his younger brother is going to focus more on moral cultivation. Okay, so which will, uh, if you talk about the ontological level, it will be qi and the principle. One school will say the qi have yin and the yang, they move, right? And this move is the principle, all right? Another way to talk about, they have underlying universal principle. The qi, which has yin and the yang, they follow this principle. So they become a two school, okay? And at this moment, I mean, this time, the two brothers, it's not very clear, but you will see, I probably will bring it up next year, is 300 years later, it's a, oh no, 200 years later, Zhu Xi in the Southern Song, they have separate idea in this way. And they have the very famous argument between these uh, two scholars. Uh, one is Lu Jiuyuan, one is uh, Zhu Xi. Okay, uh, that's just for me to finish up uh, today's section because that's the last part I'm going to talk about the school of the hard mind. Okay, so basics, okay, let, let me do this one. Uh, according to Chen Hao, metaphysically, there is an inner connection between all things. All right? What mentions called the feeling of my uh, hard mind. I, I copy from uh, Feng Yulan, so I decided not to change uh, word. So uh, he talked about feeling of commiser commiseration, okay? Unbearing mind, that's what he's talking about the mind heart, when you see the kids about to fall, is simply an expression of this connection between ourselves and the other thing. So you and the, that young kids, you don't know who the kid is. You have this kind of connection. Even you see a dog suffering, right? You will try to help. That's the connection he's talking about. If often happen, however, our unbearing mind is obscured by selfishness and they use the near confusion that is selfish desire, simply there. That's this part is talking about where's the evil coming from, right? Same as the, the, the question in the uh, 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 Western philosophy, right? God is all nice, nice, all good, the good heart of the greatest. Where's the evil coming from, right? Same question. So here's the solution. So you have a good heart, but you have the selfish desire, okay? So you may argue, okay, the heart mind and desire are the same or different? Okay, so that's another question. So his younger brother is going to, I don't resolve this question because he know they are smart people. They know that's a loophole, that's a, that's a problem, that's a problematic argument. So hence the original unity is lost. What is necessary is simply to remember the, uh, the original there is oneness between oneself and all things. And that to act accordingly with sincerity and attentiveness. Uh, in Chinese, it's cheng and the jing. In this way, the original unity will be restored in due course. Such is the general idea of philosophy of Chen Hao, which, okay, Lu Xiangshan and Wang Yangming, okay, that's the two philosophers we will talk about uh, sometime next year. This one is 100 years later, Lu Xiangshan. Wang Yang is about 400 years later, okay, so called the My Heart School, even it's not orthodoxy in Confucius, but that's also important. So I just make a quick chart on this one. In Feng Yulan's writing, uh, he talked about, uh, I think the title he put is Two Schools of Neo Confucius. And in my opinion, in some other opinion, it could be three schools, right? But uh, nobody can deny there's two major schools. One is so called Heart My School. That's today we are talking about. Okay, start from Chen Hao, right? And then later on, about 100 years later, Lu Xiangshan, okay? Or sometimes called Lu Jiuyuan. 400 years, years later in Ming Dynasty, Wang Yangming, okay? Uh, that will be continued on the heart-mind school of uh, uh, neo-Confucians. 
And his younger brother, I'm going to cover in December, Chen Yi is talking about so-called uh, universal principle school. That's another difficult word, D. Okay, I'm going to do some research on uh, some uh, further discuss on this word. Uh, the principle school, universal principle school, which was resolved, kind of answer Paul's question of how, okay, how to do it, right? And the Zhu Xi is going to bring up, I sometimes I call him uh, the godfather of uh, new Confucian or Confucianism, okay? Because if you pay attention, you might feel to this moment, Confucianism become more religious-like, right? It kind of become like a religion. You need to practice, you have a goal, you talk about yours. Only thing you lack is God. Nobody put a Confucius as God, but without God, still kind of religious practice. So another school, uh, Feng Yulan didn't mention, is Zhang Zai, we talked about last week. He talked about metaphysics, talked about um, qi as everything. And the kind of being absorbed by uh, Chen brother. But actually, about 600 years later, Wang Fuzi in the Qin Dynasty, or Wang Chuan San, okay, is going to continue so-called the qi school, and which is not that popular, but I think it's also important, this one. So uh, just right time, I finished uh, in exactly two hours. So I was hanging on here for a uh, few minutes, okay? And depending on what question you have, and then uh, uh, on anything you want to share, you want to comment, and then please, you know, and it's an open question, you know? So I hope I make it clear on today's Chen uh, uh, Any comment or question or anything you want to share? What did you learn today? No? <laughs> okay, Joe, thank you. No, yeah, no, I, one, Paul's question was actually very interesting as far as how do we cultivate virtue, right? And how does it differ from the West? And I, I don't think it differs all that much to be quite honest. Yeah, I, I, I don't I, see I much it, different, right? I mean, we, it, there, yeah, but it is something that you can cultivate on a regular basis by, you know, essentially, um, you know, by uh, practicing things like charity or practicing, you know, things like keeping being conscious about the actions that you take and um, and and pursuing virtue. Uh, you can cultivate it through your habits. Yeah, uh, that's many ways to do it. I, I sometimes I feel like uh, like Aristotle is probably closer to the uh, 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 Asian philosophy. Took more on uh, how to do it, right? So I I think the Western and East uh, that's a big subject, and then uh, uh, I that's my general feeling. I think. Uh, uh, Asian philosophy probably more on the cultivation side, okay. So uh, more on, uh, but again, doesn't matter how much you talk about, it still cannot govern your deed, right? You still can do best in, doesn't matter how much you read it. So the example I like to use is Jiang Kai Shek, right? He is claimed he is a Confucian, okay, and he is a dedicated. Uh, faithful Christian, he inherited the two best moral school, but I don't see he did every good thing, you know? So yeah, you can do evil, no matter how, how good the philosophy you do. And just a quick question, the ontology would be the equivalent to our metaphysics? I think so, they're very similar, they'll be similar. Okay, but I try not to use, uh, but Chinese is called Chun Yu Lun, that's the Chinese scholar usually. The, the, the Chinese word is not I invented, that's the uh, Chinese scholar, okay. Uh, they use these three, uh, three terms, okay. Chun Yu and Gong uh, Fu and Jing uh, Jie. Uh, so it's easy to translate. Chun Yu means ontology, that's no doubt about it. When you talk about Kung Fu, they talk about moral cultivation, okay? Right. I don't think that's doubted. If you read uh, 
Analytic. There's a lot of things, right? Uh, when you when you when you travel around, you should call your parent. Okay, not call. Then your parent no. So that's kind of cultivation, right? And uh, theory of rain. That's the translation is difficult because what do you mean? That means something you reach there. So I find out that the most close uh, idea probably the Nietzsche's uh, Zarathustra. And another thing is kind of like, I don't know, George uh, Santiana, okay, he talk about rent, uh, rent of a building. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, how close, I don't want to mislead everyone, but I, I, I still try to figure out what's the best word, but I find out this term, jie, okay, help me understand, uh, uh, help me read uh, Chinese, philosophy writing much better. So that's why I decided to share. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we can come back. To yeah, that. you can call there. metaphysics, but uh, the reason don't call metaphysics, one of the reason is when we talk about metaphysics, we quickly think about God, we talk about immortality of soul, we talk about free will, which doesn't exist. <laughs> you know? oh. When you talk about ontology, you're talking about the essence of something, right? Yeah, I think uh, that's talking. That, that's the way talking about. So his brother, so, sometimes people call ontological human nature good, okay? Because his younger brother kind of bring the human nature is good to the ontological level. That means based on principle, the universal principle. So they're linking universal principle to ontologies. I think so. I think so. That's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I think it's very difficult. And I'm not saying I, 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 I may, next year I may find out I was wrong. Okay. It could be. But, but that's the way the, the Chinese word, the three Chinese word, Sun Yu Lun, Gong Fu Lun, and Jing Jie Lun, that's being used in the Chinese philosophy, especially in the Confucian scholarly. Confucian study, that's true, okay. And then how do they map to the Western philosophy? I don't know, okay. I just try my best. That would be really interesting, universal yeah. principle and ontologies uh, meet up. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Well, I will see next week, we'll probably have a better uh, discussion on that. And I also find out it's really helped me. Uh, it, it will be different. Uh, when I read it and uh, when I present it, <laughs> when I present it, I start to feel like, oh, this one may not be that convincing, right? So sometimes I read it, I feel convinced me. When I try to convince everybody, I find out, hmm, they may not be that correct. Yeah. So anyway, Quan, uh, please. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, you will find me a little bit uh, obsessed by that book, but I have the pretension to say that <laughs> about the answer for, for the question of cultivation, uh, there is a book in the Confucian uh, corpus which answer very directly to that question, and that book is called the Tasre, okay, the Great Learning. Because if you read the Great Learning, uh, it's a... It has the quality in my mind, in my understanding. Uh, first, it has been written by one of the major disciples of Confucius, uh, Master Zhong, Zhong Zhu. And I think that it has the big quality of being at the same time, it's not a very long time, theoretical book and a practical book, okay? Because if you read the Tashue, uh, you have uh, uh, the, the description of the uh, of the three guidelines, and you have the A stages, as you know better than me, Jason. Okay, so the three... okay, uh, I will stop you for a moment because okay. that I'm going to talk about you. You read my mind, so <laughs> okay, that yes, I'm going because... to talk about next time. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because that's I... the answer, kind of the answer. Uh, Paul's question. Okay. Uh, if I make it a, 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 a state, if I have to make a statement, Chen Hao, he bring up mentions to the table, okay? Yeah. And his younger brother probably bring the Da Xue to the table because yeah. he's talking about the principle and then he will be focused on the how to, which is getting knowledge, okay? 
格物 ，OK。So I think I will end on the next this year. So make this year's project perfect because if you were in the first section in this year, we introduce 大学 the great、exactly. and I'm、okay. going to end on the 大学 ，OK in the next section. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so so I'm perfectly satisfied that you will end with the task way. Yes, <laughs> I will end the task. But well, that's Chen Yi is talking about. So next week, ah,、uh, next week, next month, I'm going to end it with task. Since I started、uh, with task, okay. Okay. Ah, <laughs>、uh, hey, Jason, I have also a question for you. Please. There is a new translation in Chinese uh, uh, for metaphysics, which is uh, uh, "sing er shang." Sing er shang. Okay, but that translation, I think, it has been translated from the English or from the French word. It or was it an original word from ancient China? So you did French, okay. Very good. You talk about this. I hope you help next week because I'm going to bring up Sandy in next、uh, next month.、Uh, we talk about his brother Chen Yi. He also focused because he is more ontological than uh, uh, Chen Hao. So he will start from the book "Xing Er Shang Wei Zi Dao, Xing Er Xia Wei Zi Qi." He's going to start from this. That means above the form is Dao. Under the form will be tangible or visible. Okay, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. You look like you、question. read my mind. So <laughs> okay,、uh, yeah, because I cultivate myself, so I can read your mind.、Uh, yeah, so, great, thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, you answer my question because one of my Chinese、uh, and Japanese friends they told me that it has been a new creation. In the twentieth century, that、uh, that word the sing su sing er shang sui, but what you tell me is that it that expression existed already with Cheng Yi. That's what you answer me. Yes, yeah. So he talk about, but of course they don't know what's metaphysical. They are not going to speak English or something like no, this. No, 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 no. But 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 what you said that those four words existed in the text written by Cheng Yi. That what you told me. Does it exist in Yi Jing in the book, in the book of change? In the book of change, do you remember、yes. what、uh, hexagram? Xi Chi Xia, I think. Okay, but what hexagram? Or was it in the introduction or the or the ten winds? I think the Xi Chi, okay, in the uh, okay, in Xi Chi, okay, in one. Okay, I think the Xi Chi. So the word is Xing Er Shang Wei Zi Dao, Xing Er Xia Wei Zi Qi. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this sentence because that's important for Chen Yi because what's above, what's under, that's important okay. for him. Okay. Anyway, I I appreciate a lot your answer. It、okay. uh, relieves me a lot. <laughs> yeah, because we all read、uh, the same、uh, classic, so the mindset will be, you know, will be similar. I think that's why you can read me. <laughs> uh, uh, Paul, yeah. please. Sure.、Question. Yeah.、Um, I just I want to respond. That Joe's point made me think about some other points, which is I want to put in the form of a question and maybe. Try to read your mind a little more and see. I know I won't try to make you do next month, this month, but I'm tempted. But、um, my point is, Joe brought up this connection with metaphys metaphysics and ontology. But my thought is, if you're going to propose that there's these four fundamentals of the human nature, and that we're talking about a realm where you're going to a connected oneness with all being. You're making a set of metaphysics ontological statements by doing that, and therefore the answer to cultivating that is meditation. You just have to sit. I, I think you are perfect. Your oneness. So there's、yeah. my thought. Yeah, I think you are perfectly right. You you're not reading my mind. You read the Chen Hao's mind. Okay. So, but his younger brother is going to take take one step ahead. Okay, because his brother is going to say. Your heart, mind, the chi, they all under the form, okay. 
So they are tangible. The, the principle is the, up the phone is the principle. So he's going to put the human heart, human nature is good in a different level. And that, so we should become a different school later. Uh, Thank you. Gail? Yeah. Oh, and me. Um, yeah. I'm, first of all, I must apologize for being coming so late. So I haven't got the whole lecture. Um, but I think Confucius, the whole theory of it is wonderful because it's not, he's, he's trying to guide you to, to a better way of life. And um, all, the, all the people that follow him at put their opinions onto it and their interpretation of his writings. And it's absolutely wonderful. And I really do want to learn a lot more about it. So thank you very much for your, um, um, your explanation of, of things, because sometimes the translation isn't, isn't obvious to you unless it's explained the way you have done. So thank you for that. So oh, just you're okay. say thank yeah. you. Thank you for joining us. But I'd like to thank you to mention about the better way of life. And next week, we'll, next time we we'll don't talk about, we, we constantly forget. They still pursue happiness, okay? Remember the point I show how happy he's doing this. And then he's even his younger brother, we will say, oh, he's more serious. But he still pursue happiness. They, he's, instead of going to Mencius, he's going to Confucius talk about, at least in our analytic reading, we talk about this. He's going to bring up the searching happiness uh, as yeah. Confucius and uh, Yan Hui. Okay, so you can, so remember the, up to the goal, steal happiness in this way. Sometimes in today, uh, or probably Zhu Xi's fault or the government's fault, People kind of forget the happiness part on that. Only mm. remember the serious part on that. So, uh, okay. So um, I think we probably should end uh, today. And I'm going to take two weeks off for Thanksgiving. And then December, I'm coming back to do this one. And then uh, we will continue uh, this journey. And then... Uh, uh, I hope everybody learned something and I just honest to say I learned a lot when I prepare a session. I also learn a lot when I talk this and I also learn a lot, learn a lot when people ask me questions, sometimes challenge me or sometimes correct my mistake or give me suggestion. That's all wonderful. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, have happy Thanksgiving. And See you next month. So happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you.